up, tap in. It's your boy Fifth of Sam. I'm here chilling with the crew. What up, y'all? <laughs> your boy C hey. Breezy's back. He's back. Right. Uh, welcome back, Ev. Hello, 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 everybody. Yo. So we want to send out, you know, our prayers and thoughts always um, with uh, Big M and her family. Um, you know, like may God continue to to heal and, and lift you up and your family. Um, and, um, the tapping family miss you, man. And, and we here for you. Um, so prayer up for the Eugene family still. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's been a while. <laughs> it's just a little minute. Uh, the panel, uh, tonight we want to, we want to discuss, a, uh, a topic I think is going to relate to a lot of the youth. Yes, you know, sir. and hopefully you guys have uh, some good insight for them. Remember, we are not expert. Um, we just but, people that um, love to talk. You know that <laughs> we just people that love to talk. And Say it louder, dog. <laughs> like that, and we're gonna let you know what we think. Right? Yeah. We're gonna use some um, verses and uh, our own uh, thoughts, and you know, you let us know what you what you think in the comments. All right? Man, we're just gonna dissect the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's get this. This, this 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 jumping right so what do you guys think is the biggest challenge uh when it comes to um young christian um and society today like like what kind of challenges that do you think they they face oh shout out to the audience y'all can answer down in the comments too for sure yeah that'd be that'd be very helpful for sure what what is the biggest challenge as a youth as a young christian that you face in your life yeah yeah well for me as a youth, I say, I mean, at this day and age, just, we're very opinionated. So when when there's so much opinions, then you, you lose sight of the facts. So it's like, as a youth, for me, I mean, my experience is like, there's a hard time. Sometimes I have a hard time of figuring out what are facts and what are just opinions. You know, trying to decipher the the, the difference. Um, so yeah, how, how do you? How would you say uh, you? What what would you use? What method would you use to overcome that? So, um, still in the process of overcoming it. Um, but one thing that helps is a, uh, of course, prayer and a and a, and a daily, um, and consistent a consistent walk with Christ, um, and personally, because um. Uh, the Bible, the Bible really speaks heavily on like, you know, the Lord will communicate. The Lord is not just some being that's just up on the roof or up in the sky. That's just governing everything. No, he, he communicates, you know, he, he, he talks, he reveals. So, um, we're trying to figure out what our facts and what our opinions is reading your word and staying in that, like I said, consistent relationship with him so that he can reveal and show things like, yo, this is of me and this is not of me. This is what I need you to learn, and this is what I don't need you to learn. This is, this is not, this is not a part of the Bible. This is not a part of my being, or this is not a part of, um, uh, my truth. This is not part of what I made. This is not what I made for you. This is not what I made for the people. This is false. This is just people speaking. So like, it's hard for somebody who knows. It's like, for example, it's like a friend you have. Say you know a friend for since you were a kid. You know, and then you, and then, you know, you grow up, you're like 20 something, you're still friends and somebody random just starts speaking about your friend. They start saying a whole bunch of things, you know, because of that relationship and that consistency with your friend, whether what they saying is true or not. And if you, if, if you are skeptical, you can go back to your friend and verify. So it's like, there must be consistency in your relationship. If you, if you don't have no type of consistency, then it's like, you're going to, you're going to believe anything or it's hard to believe something. You it's just going to be just straight opinions. All you hearing, and you won't know what is concrete, you know, cause you ain't consistent. That makes sense. Yeah. So it sound a lot like the spirit of discernment. True. Right. So we can know what's right, what's wrong, what is biblical and what is not, what is truth, what is, you know, false. And, um, uh, what is manipulation versus God's words. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I think for me, I was, I'm thinking like fleshly desires. 
Because, you know, when Paul said, you know, sometimes you want to do good, but then... It's you, just... you, you, you're tussling with your flesh? <laughs> <laughs> no. I feel like that's so oh, gross. That's so bad at that. <laughs> Hey, I don't think I don't think that's a young person problem. What? It's not everybody problem, oh, yeah, bro. That's true. That's true. That's true. Our elderly are struggling between the flesh and you know the spirit, bro. <laughs> Yo. But you know, like when it comes to young adults and you know us, like as a Christian, I feel like sometimes it's hard because I feel like the elderly is not really giving us what they should have. Like the people in the church. Well, what do you mean by that? It's like, I feel like, maybe in my experience, there's a lot of things I had to learn on my own. Mm-hmm. Where, of course, it's like, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. There's other things. I mean, I don't want to go like to the like, oh, this is the example. I can say like one of the fleshly um, desire probably... I'm going to say something very simple, like hatred, hating somebody, right? So it's like, I know the Bible talk about a lot. Do not hate somebody. Love. and But we... We're not perfect. And there's some people who do things to us. It's just like, you just want to hit the person. And it's just like learning to go back to the word and said, oh, like, that's how you're supposed to do it. You get the, you, you have the, you know, the recipe of, you know, you're supposed to be respectful to yours. So to somebody, you're supposed to respect that person. If the person, turned, you, you know, did something wrong to you, you're supposed to turn the other cheek and just move away. But then, come on now, we're human. We have those emotions. So we don't really learn how to control it. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's one of the hardest thing that to me i feel like i deal with at time but that was just an example people i don't hit nobody i pray for god <laughs> yeah I, I think the word respect right i didn't think of this before because respect was i think i used to take it on like respect like you know you respect your elders you respect you know those who are older than you of course you respect the you know, um, your, uh, superiors, you know, like that's how I think when we, when we think of respect, that's how we look at it. But respect is so much more than that. Right. Because we taught as, you know, in our culture is, 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 uh, I think it's, um, fault us in that, you know, whereas Haitians when growing up, um, our, our opinions, you know, as kids and youth does not matter in a sense, right? To an elder or to somebody that is older, right? And anything that you say to a older person is taken as disrespect, right? But if we're talking biblical, respect is something that is... Two-way street. T- a two-way street. It's an exchange. Yeah. It's an exchange. Um, your opinion does not uh, cancel mine right and i had this conversation with somebody an opinion cannot be wrong facts are facts an opinion cannot be wrong but in an argument to opinion we can find a common ground to agree but i'm not wrong you're not wrong i don't have to convince you that you're wrong you don't have to convince me that i'm wrong because it's an opinion but if we are speaking facts then you could convince me that I'm wrong about what I think is facts compared to what is actual facts. Mm-hmm. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So therefore I can have an opinion, but you growing up, they teach you not to have one. And I think the American culture is, is the reverse, right? You can't have, well, I'm not I mean, quite. I mean, yeah, <laughs> not I'm really quite. Gonna say, I'm not just saying just how it is nowadays. You yeah. know, with social media and everything like, like that. You can speak your mind. You can speak okay. your mind. You can but, speak, but like, it's a dangerous thing, though. But the thing is, but that's just that's that's that again. But that's what makes it like as a youth so difficult because it's like you can hear an opinion by just a flick of opening your just one app on your phone. You can open Instagram and gain tens thousands of of just opinions about anything. Rubbish. Just and, and for real, and it could be like stuff that don't make no sense or that has no importance, no significance, but it's just an opinion. And there's some opinions that are about that's about you know big topics or serious things, like say of even of the faith. You know, like it's so hard to really, as a youth, you know, to really know what what to do because. You got so many things of like people trying to inform. You got too many influences. 
Everybody trying to be an influencer. Yeah, everybody, bro. <laughs> so uh, let me ask you this then. So by what you just said, how do you think a young Christian can um, stay true to their beliefs when there's so much opinion against their faith? Take sanctification literally. Be set apart literally. There is no, like, it's hard. Like, for some people, some people probably got that strength to, like, be, you know, have one goal and one mindset, you know, and one, keep going. one, one objective. And they be around many objectives and won't fade and won't turn. Mm. Cool. Kudos to you. It doesn't but apply for, me, for everybody. You know, as a Christian, I cannot be at every place. I can't even, sometimes I can't be at every church. I can't be. I can't be at every at every event. I can't be at every with, with communion Church or communicating. Event. Yeah, event. even that. Like I can't even. I can't communicate with everybody because even though even though like I, I feel like you know as as Christians we're called to you know preach the word of God you know spread the gospel but sometimes understand that like understand your limits understand that there's gonna be a time where you probably wanna. Oh, one thing I heard once: not every good idea is a God idea. You wanna? It's a good. Quote. It's, a good it's a good idea. Yes, to go preach the gospel to, to the, to the to the to the trap house down the street. You might get killed, <laughs> but you might die. You might, you might die. Pop out. You feel me? <laughs> or you might start. You might you start might the experience. Of- yeah, you might start. You might thinking of. If you wanna, you wanna yeah. get a little one. Like, no, I'm you not gonna st- be influenced. You're not right? Gonna be, you're, no, you're I'm gonna influence you're, you're them. Might, and you then know, your 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 heart and your mind yeah, weak. Exactly, like you ain't ready for that. Yeah. You feel me? So like, it, it's the one thing is just um, what's the word I said? Uh, sanctification. Yeah, sanctification. sanctification. You you got to be able to be set apart to grow a foundation. I feel like as a, as a as a Christian, the main thing is a firm foundation. It's having a foundation. You can't expect a three month old um Christian. Start preaching. So do you believe, like, I'm going to let you answer that question, Evie, because I want to hear what you have to say. But do you believe in, um, man, I just, I I, like the thing escaped me. Like, um, false, um, man, I'll come back to it. Go ahead. Like, you know. Like, it was right there. (laughs) Well, you know, something that Caleb said, you know, I was thinking about was, like, that I feel like, I think every Christian Jew struggle with is differentiate god voice and everybody else's voices because sometimes it's like we don't know when god is speaking and a lot of times it's like i don't know what god is telling me and i don't know if this is from god i don't know if you know we cannot really tell you remember (laughs) false emotional faith false emotional Emotional faith faith. what is that what is that like i'm running because (laughs) like sometimes we think that it's god you know like it's god's idea for me to go to that trap Mm -hmm. house God told me to go to that trap house. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, if I don't go, I'm not obedient to the Holy Spirit. But God never told you that, bro. You know, it goes back like to God the God never told me to do that. I wouldn't even say, like, false emotional faith, but it's... Like, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a crazy word. <laughs> but, oh, 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 oh. Hey, that hurt. Oh, okay. False emotional faith. <laughs> I don't even know if you're saying. I'll say it's just like... It's just understanding... For real, for real, what God actually told you? Did God tell you this? Yes or no? You're not listening to me. It yeah. goes back you think it's a good idea. It'll be the good that holds you. E- emotionally, I feel like, you know, I'm I'm being pushed to do this because of my faith. Right? So it can't be wrong. It has to be from but God. But as I was saying, because you guys didn't let me talk because I was too excited. It was in line with what you were saying. <laughs> it goes back to what I was saying. It has to go back to the voice of God because sometimes we cannot differentiate when God is telling us something because I mean I know you said emotions it, I think it, it goes by feelings like we feel it like that yes that intuition like may, maybe it's from God or um sometimes I feel like especially young people because we don't know and we're still like praying so I don't know why this generation is so much about like oh we don't know God's will we don't know what God's will for us we show like we need to find what God's will so we like we have that gut feeling and if we're not doing anything so that mean we're not in line with God, so we have to go seek for it. So at times, like, we go and then do what we're not supposed to be doing. You know what? So, like, some time ago, I used to think that that gut feeling was a thing from God. But the Bible teaches us that, you know, not to trust your heart. 
the heart of a man is deceitful. So we need to know our words because that's how God speaks to us, right? God revealed himself to us through his word, you know? So if you are in his word, then you will know his voice. There's no other way around it. Like you cannot wake up in the morning and says, you know, God sent me to China. Bro, stay in your word. <laughs> stay in your word, man. Like know the calling that God has for your life by staying in his word. He said, seek my face. Right, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and that's His word. So I think we need to stop making decisions based on our feelings because sometimes our feelings can be wrong. It could be just that, our feelings, right? I feel, uh, feel like you know, you know, later on in that verse where it talks about that the heart, you know, is the most deceitful thing. Mm -hmm. it, it acts as a question that says, you know, who can understand it? So it's like, it's not even that like, you. Sh it's not even that you shouldn't trust your heart, but understand that your heart is something that you can't comprehend. So meaning, it can lead you to 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 things the that wrong, are not the wrong of God. Path. Yeah, you feel yeah. I me? Mean? So it's like, yeah. so the main thing is like, is try to understand like. Who to follow? Who to actually listen to? Like, trust me, like, bro, it is hard to really, like, you know, sometimes it's really hard to, to, to understand what is the, to, to understand who's actually speaking between your thoughts, between somebody else's influence to, to even think, or if it's God's voice for real. Like, it's really, it's really difficult to really understand it. But that's why, like, you know, like I said from the jump, you know, consistency plays a part. You know, there's no way you can be deceived by something that you've been practicing for years. For years. You know, that you already built a foundation on, you know. So, like, I feel like every Christian, you know, as a young, you know, that's young out here in this society, focus on building a great foundation so that you won't be led astray. It's hard for you to be deceived when you have the voice of God or when you have the word of God already living inside of you. Like, you can hear something on social media and be like, Jesus, nah, Jesus ain't say that. Nah, but, <laughs> I ain't say that. Homie. Nah, he ain't, he ain't yeah. say that. No, nah, that's not right. Right. He, he ain't say that. So, I'm a, like, I'm gonna take that in the comments though. But you go yeah. ahead. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the vertical and I that that's something that God's been beating on me this whole week. Vertical relationship is more important because if you have the vertical relationship, then you won't have to worry about the horizontal because God is already gonna take care of that. For you the vertical is what we need to practice and sometimes we think attaching ourselves to people placing things is how we become faithful to god but people placing things does not replace god god is a jealous god he wants he seeks a relationship with us he wants a personal connection that is the reason why he sent his son to die for us, man, because he want, he he longs for that personal relationship with you. And by the, by his son's blood, we obtain that. And and yes, he's jealous. So he don't like sharing his time. He don't like sharing, you know, his his glory with anything else that you can preoccupy your mind, your space with. And sometimes we work on those things more then we work on the vertical relationship. I have I have a question with the gut feeling. So let's say, because I know we're saying like, for example, we took example if God said, oh, God said, you know, to go preach to the trap house or whatever, or to go to China. Are you stuck what in if, the trap house? No, but no, I want to say like, what if you get a gut feeling and it's like, you feel like God is telling you, just an example, it's like God said to me, give Caleb a thousand dollars. Is that a I gut, is that a gut feeling though? Is that a gut feeling or is that from God? I believe that a gut feeling. I believe that's, from God. I believe that's a that's a that's a calling from God. That, that's from God. How do you that. know it's from God? Yeah. But the other one was not from God. I, I'll put it like this: the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you that you would not otherwise be willing to give up or do. The Holy Spirit will do that. Somebody that's in struggle, like the Holy Spirit can reveal to you that the person is in struggle and, 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 and pushes you, you know, to do an act of service for that person. I believe, I believe that <laughs> so, Kayla will receive that, you know, $1,000 for sure. But then you won't go to China. Yeah, but I wouldn't relate that to a gut feeling. A gut feeling is a risky move. Like you do understand that, right? 
That's a risky move. It's a risky move. That's, that's a, good. a good move. That's, that's, good. that's, 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 good. that's a revelation. Yeah. <laughs> That's a word from God. That's a word from God. That Maybe that's my word of the, the word of God. Hey, hey, look, but look, you were sick. But the, I put my cash at that. Wow, bro. That's just my you know, the word, though. Men, like, can you imagine sitting in an audience where a preacher is preaching about about prosperity, and then he says, you know, m- by motivational speech because they got that packed down. Okay, no matter what room they there are, no matter what the number is, they have a pack down. They have a speech pack down, you know, to convince you that if you do this, then you'll receive that. And then how many people have that? What you're talking about, a gut feeling. Oh man, I, I gotta let me go take that fifty thousand dollars off the house, you know, and, and sure. give it because <laughs> God says, you know, the Lord that, had to confirm that one. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, but it's it's a form of manipulation, and the Holy Spirit does does not need to manipulate you to do anything. So we can like go by and be like, okay, you know, that's not from God. You know, and we're gonna move on. Block that thought. To, you know, to like be that honest, thousand dollars. With that question, you know, oh no, not thousand dollars. If God tell you to give him a thousand dollars, but that's what you I'm better saying. Give him a thousand dollars because the thing is, it's the same thing. If I have a gut feeling that says God want me to go to China. Cause I feel like sometimes if it's if it's like if we feel like if it's something bad, we're like, oh my god, it's all the way to China. That's not from God. But if it's a thousand dollars, we feel like it's gonna be beneficial to somebody close to us. Then we're like, yes, that's from God. So it's like, how do people out there, the young people, understand like, hey, this is from God in a way? Cause sometimes we do need the help you to know, understand like those stuff. Stay on your me. knees, man. Stay on your knees. As a young person, my pony. Like, yeah. so shout out to all the old folks. You feel me? <laughs> all nah, the old there, folks. There, there are some Go young... down on the comments. Help me out. Because I'm a young person. I can't help you. you know, I'm still trying to figure that out myself. Trying to figure it out. There are young people that, that are um, missionaries, right? Like, they go and, and they have a word from God. And they, they, they go and they do these things. They get themselves in the line of fire. But it's not for everyone. Like, don't don't be out here talking about God sent me to mission. And then you go and you on your own. You on your own because God did not send you. Well, I don't think you're on your own. Huh? Because I feel like at the end of the day, God is in control of you. can tell me if I'm wrong. That's what is in my head. I can tell. I'm not going to tell you if you're wrong. <laughs> I feel like at the end of the day, God is in control of everything. And if you decide to get up and say, okay, I am going to go and do this for God. If God don't tell me no, I can still go because at the end of the day, I'm doing it for his glory. If I'm not doing it for his glory, then I know God is not is not in it. I mean now there's consequences, but there's a gray line in what you just said, man. Like, cause there's a lot of people that does things in the name of the Lord, but it's not from God. But the thing is, when you say in the name of the Lord, because we don't know the person's heart, we don't know what God if God find glory in it, if God do find glory, then I feel like God will probably allow it to how, happen. How do you know that? That's what I'm saying. We don't know. There's something. You know, there's certain stuff. One thing I say, I say I blame Grace. You, I, I you blame Grace. Blame Grace. Yes, I blame Grace. Not you, Grace. We're talking about the grace of yes, Jesus. Yes, the grace of God. I blame the grace of God because it's like you know, as a parent. You know, well, I'm not a parent, but like as um sometimes of what I hear. There's times where like parents will see, you know, their child do something that, that that's just probably dumb. And sometimes, of course, they will intervene and, and prevent you from doing it. But Papa. sometimes they will make you actually, all right, do it. See what happened. Like I remember one time, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was I think I was in Haiti one time, and there's like this there's like this hill down. And then Mama, I guess she knew me already. I got out the car, she said, do not run. She told me, don't run. I looked at her. Took off. And I took off. <laughs> I took off. And then she didn't say nothing but just watch me go down. <laughs> and it wasn't until I got to the end, she came to me. Well, I, I'm boohoo crying. I got cuts. I got dirt. <laughs> marks, I got rocks. I, I'm boohoo crying. All that. So she looked at me. She said, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> she like, 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 and then why did you that she's telling me that? She could have, she could have, of course, prevented me, but, but Mill, like, shout out to my English teacher. She just, just grabbed my hand, like, she just grabbed my hand and just hold me. We're going to let us thing together. 
but there's some parents that actually let you like, yo, you're gonna experience that you go, for you're yourself. Gonna, you're gonna learn and, the day. But the thing is, what I why I say I blame grace is because even in times like that, where where the Lord is like, I didn't tell you to do that, but sometimes I believe the Lord not gonna stop you. You gonna do it, all right? You ain't gonna die. I'm gonna protect you. I'm gonna be with you. But you gonna go through some things. You gonna you wish even, you, you did otherwise. Even. Yeah, you gonna go through something. Yeah. You would have wished you should like you would have just thought to just listen. Like I didn't tell you to do that. Like, but if you are gonna do it, go ahead, go do it. That's why sometimes that's why I say I blame Greece because Grace will sometimes allow you to just do it. The Lord is still going to be there because he's a graceful God. He's a loving God. He's going to be there to protect you throughout it. But at the same time, all right, bro. I'm going to be with you, but watch. I don't think it's all scenarios because I feel like because God gave us wisdom, there's time. Because there's time we're praying for certain things and we go to people that's like, God is not going to give you an answer. God is not going to say anything. You just have to choose. Choose like, if for example, like a career path. Then be like God is not gonna tell you. Just make a. I'm not saying that's. I'm not saying that's 100. Yeah, I think I think sometimes, sometimes. I'm just, we, yeah, we sometimes. I'm not saying that's 100. percent We overcomplicate but things. Uh, so, like, based on what we are saying, how uh, do you think that it's a necessity for a young person to have somewhat of a mentor, somebody that they can confine in? You need it. In, in, you know, saying. and how do you like in the current? Um, uh, state that you know the youth is today how do you select that and can a non-christian be a mentor to a christian no, uh, can a non-christian be, be a, a mentor, mentor to a to non-christian Christian. youth that's actually a good question i know i actually I'm, I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> okay now i'll be home <laughs> anyway hey, they I'm call gonna him gonna a lie. humble jd okay <laughs> I, I sometimes i'm not gonna lie what are you thinking? I would say no, it's a no. But at the same time. Your question is that? I don't I'm know. Why, why I say, why I question it uh -huh. is because um, there is some things, there is some things like, uh, like what, what's a random thing I can think of? Um, a mentor on a, on try to, damn. You can't even <laughs> think of none, right? No, nah, like. Wait. Like a career, yeah. Let's say career. A career. Like, like you could, like, say you have a desire. Oh, I love, um, I love painting. You know, I want to pursue that as a career. Mm -hmm. You know, so you want to go find an artist. You want to go find a painter, uh, some somebody who can sculpt, and, and then ask for like, yo, can you mentor me and try to put me in the right doors? You know, for, for, for this opportunity, or can you just train me on how to paint? And I, be, I believe somebody can mentor you and train you how to paint. And they don't got to be a Christian. If you answer this oh. question, I feel like your question is invalid. What you just said? I'm going to tell you why. Because <laughs> you're saying, oh, can a non-Christian be a mentor? It's like saying, can a non-Christian be a teacher or professor? No, no, no. The way he answered so the question, we're talking about, we, we're talking about, about uh, your, your uh, faith walk here. Then why you right? take an example? So, so if we talk about faith walk. <laughs> we're talking about a faith walk. Why, why, you, why would you get somebody that's not of the walk? No, that's not <laughs> <laughs> you know? That literally goes back to my example. If you, if you want to be a painter, why are you not getting a painter mentor? Why are you getting a singing coach? That doesn't make sense. Get something that's that really about what you go to. Of that's course. what I'm saying. If you went to it like that, then there's no yeah, point yeah, in it. My fault. I, I, I'm misinterpreting. What? <laughs> Again, it's up for interpretation, you know? Maybe. And that's my how fault. he took it. Because like, if it's about faith, you need somebody that have the same belief so that can talk about the same God that can guide you. But to answer the first question, prayer. You need to ask God. And I remember I was listening to a sermon that, you know, like, sometimes we only see God as a savior. You always want him to save us, but we don't see him as a leader and asking him like, hey, God, I'm going to make this decision and I want him to be part of it. So if you need a mentor, you need somebody, you know, that person going to be, because I've seen people that have mentors like, oh, I need to speak to them. Like they basically, they, they rely on that um, mentor yeah, so, for every single thing that they have to do. I, I see what you mean. So yeah, so you do need to pray yeah. and ask God like, hey God, I need this person. Please send somebody my way because you know everybody's heart and you know what I need, not what I want. And based on what I need, give me someone that can provide that and help me because God said he sent people to help. So if he does, so you need to find the right person, not you looking for yourself and then find somebody that we think because it's like it go right back to how 
when when um, Samuel was anointing David because we're looking at you know the outer appearance so we need God to show us like what's the inside of that person's the heart, heart. The I heart. think I think for that part as well I think um uh sometimes it's hard for people to really like you want, you're gonna take back your previous answer no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> my answer it's still was a whole different question <laughs> so let's just go like that okay but to like what she was saying like you know some people really can on on mentors people really actually rely on them and, and actually like make them their source and make them their god and when it comes to that it's like mm. i i feel like it's both parties as a as a leader, your job is to always still direct the glory right back, back up to God. Yeah. If if like when you're when you're training or when you're trying to mentor somebody, if you can't direct somebody back to the source, then they will always look at you as the source. So in a way, you do a disjustice to what your assignment is supposed to be. So like even as a youth, like that's another thing that's very difficult. It's difficult to find somebody who can actually direct the source to God. It's hard to find these people. Some some people, I ain't gonna lie, like, I ain't gonna say too much, but sometimes like the people who 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 call on these mentors, they look at the mentors that be like out in the open, that be on the front lines, mm -hmm. you know, that be on the front of the on the magazines or the front mm -hmm. of the, the the flyers or whatever the, like the that. Influencers. <clears throat> yeah, and they look for them. But sometimes those influencers, like, not to dog what they do, like it's a good thing that you're doing what you're doing, but at the same time, be mindful of who the source is and what your job is supposed to be doing. You're supposed to direct that source back to, right. hey, man, that's God. Like, I would be a fool to say, like, anybody who's probably on a, on a flyer or on a pulpit would be a fool to say, I got up here by myself. Yeah. So it's like, it's a, it's, there's a, there's supposed to be a factor to these mentors. Like, yo, I understand you coming to me for help and I will guide you the best way I can. But the, my guidance will always lead to God. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I could tell I could tell you this, you know, like being in ministry for so long, um, I've had a lot of people that tells me they, they looked up to me, they they, you know, watch me and whatnot, but I never have I, I never had to sit down and tell someone, Hey, I'm your mentor. I think it's becoming a thing now where we are selecting these people saying that I choose you as my mentor. Um, you you know, like if you ask me for advice, I'm gonna give you advice. Right. The best way I know how. And if I don't know it, I'm going to I'm going to connect with somebody else that I think might know the answer. And I'm going to come back to you. If that person doesn't know it, then the, ch the chain is going to keep rolling until we could get you the best answer possible. But I don't necessarily believe in the whole I choose this person as my mentor and everything that I have going on in my life around me. That's the person. That's the only person that I no, trust. I don't believe that either. to give me advice. But that's what I've seen yeah. mentoring yeah. is turning it into nowadays. That, like if you're about to cut uh, a cough, it's like uh, mentor. Can I? Can I cough? That, I do not. Bro, like what are we I do doing, not believe, bro? Understand if you're gonna give somebody a mentor status. Understand the one thing is boundaries, and one thing is trying to decipher. What exactly are you mentoring me in? I'm not calling you as a mentor to mentor me in my life. No, Every, I'm mentoring it's, you. It's a, for, what what, they call, what they call them nowadays? Life coach? Yeah. So, so I don't need a, you as my life coach. I call coach. you for that. I call on God for my life coach. But even <laughs> that, even th I question that. A life coach. M women? So M every <laughs> decision I'm about to make, like, I'm going to trust this person got my best interest in heart for it. Everything, nah. But I advise know, every mentor, bro, every mentee that's trying to look for a mentor, have them be somebody. Work them you right specific. back to God. <laughs> like there must be a specific thing you're mentoring me in. Yeah, and it's just be this one thing. You trying to we are way into other things. Run my life. <laughs> then as, you you not doing you doing a disjustice. Yeah, you're doing a disjustice. But, you know, there's yeah, and, I, and I'm wondering. Sorry, uh, don't forget what you're about to say. Who's mentoring the mentors? Sakundi. Who's mentoring the mentors? <laughs> I ain't no mentor. So, so I need to know who's your pastor, right? What what kind of sermon you listen to on a daily basis, right? And and how devoted are you as a Christian, right? For me to trust you with my life, bro, every step of my life for me to trust you to, to give me the right opinion for decisions that I make on a daily basis, bro, 
No, nah, don't put that much trust on people. You know, don't trust don't do that. Trust trust, trust trust in the source, man. Trust God. The same source that they tap into, you could <laughs> tap 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 tap, tap in. in. <laughs> 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 to Wait, the source you know one oh, thing, the one thing you keep seeing was like trust you know i see with those mentees in the mentor oh, this, thing oh excuse me men, <laughs> men, <laughs> mentees are the people who be a mentor yeah yeah so, i'm sorry <laughs> like if i call if i call you my mentor oh, i'm no. your i'm the mentee. your mentee yeah oh you're the employer mentor. employee basically yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> but God. one thing you know one thing i see you said something about trust i seen where it's like they put so much trust in those mentors. It's like, even if you that been with them for so long, tell them something, they're going to wait until they, they go get answers from, from the, the mentor. mentor. And you're like, what is God? And, and it, it's just like, at times, it, it's, it, it, I mean, it, it is really sad because it's like, God can use multiple people yes. in your situation. It doesn't have to be the, that mentor. Correct. Probably that mentor Correct. can, yes, be there for you that season. But the next season, God probably using somebody else. And you're right there talking about God is not here. No, yeah. God is here. But you are rejecting other people because you already have somebody else or that person already know it. You're like, yeah, but you don't know if that person went through whatever you're, whatever going, you're through. going through. Like, allow somebody else, trust that person to, like, you know, for God to use the person. But mm -hmm. then sometimes we don't have that. Bro, I'm not going to lie to you. There, there's several people in my life that, that I trust with certain things. And I know there's certain ones that I would not call for certain situation, right? Um, I have a group of pastors, you know, that I know. And I remember recently I was going through um, a little thing. I didn't call none of the pastors that I've been close to. None. I called somebody that I was not close to, right? Because I wanted an opinion that was uh, unique, that 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 was not biased. That. I wanted an opinion that was neutral, right? And I couldn't get that from the people that were closest to me because they knew everything. <laughs> so they're gonna get. It's either one of them gonna tell me something that I want to hear, or they're gonna piss me off about what I didn't want to hear. But if this neutral person is telling me something, like I have to take it for face value because they're not aware of nothing, right? So in that sense, like there, there should be certain people you call depending on their, I don't even like to use that word expertise, right? I don't even like to, cause I don't think French. there's experts <laughs> at anything. Like we are all learners, right? But they, they are familiar with certain situation and, and, and incidents. And we could rely on their opinion because they've uh, been uh, tested in a sense, right? But I don't necessarily believe that there's one person that has every answer to every question that you, you have. Like like you were talking earlier. I don't know what to tell you. You better ask somebody else. Because I got no answers for you. <laughs> you know, I see you. So, like, one thing, you know, the Bible says, you know, is that you shall know them by their fruits. Yeah. You know, so as a youth, like, if you're looking for, like, some sort of guidance, because... Every youth sh needs guidance. Like, not even just youth. Everybody needs guidance some way, somehow. Um, I'll say a way maybe to get that is to look at their fruits. You know, does do their do their fruits, are they patient? You know, are they kind? Are they, you know, giving? You know, are they loving? Are they, you know, are they, <clears throat> you know, forgiving? And all that stuff. Like, are they, are they what the Bible says, you know, are fruits? You know, and, and when you see that, you see not only just, you don't just see like, oh, them boys are just a nice person or these people are just nice people. You don't just see that, but you see that, you see evidence of God's work. You see evidence of the Holy Spirit. One thing about the fruit is, is that it's not only just like cool things or just nice things, but it's evidence. You know, so a person, uh, if you're trying to look for some guidance, look for evidence. Look for somebody who, who, who. Who actually yes says that and proclaims that you know I'm a Christian and says that and and see and you see you know you know patience in them you see kindness in them you see joy in them you know and through that like you will you see one of the main things self control but like that's that's a very hard thing to really find sometimes you know nowadays you yeah. know there's a lot of there's a lot of people who don't really have that self control but once you find these things you know the Bible. I'm a firm believer in what the word says, and the word will not lead you astray. Mm -hmm. So once you find these things, you find evidence of people who can probably guide you in the right path. And not off of just what they will tell you, 
but who would who to go to. They will show you who to go to and how to go to them in order to walk, you know, or to, to answer the questions that you're asking, you know. So, yeah, I, I say that's a way, you know, to for the, for the topic, you know, to really find and decipher who is somebody. Well, like what's a struggle as a youth? If you need help, find somebody who's evidence. So, to go I mean, to, so question for you. Wait, before, before you ask me that question, I was going to say, I think your number one mentor should be God. No, duh. You go back to God. <laughs> that, 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 that's day one, A1. Wait, you know what I'm saying? You go back to God because he's the source. So he should, he will provide what you need. If you I am the like, way, the truth, and the life. So if he the knows way, the truth, the life. you need a mentor, he will send that to you. And I understand because I'm saying, I mean, seriously saying you have to look, look, look. You cannot find everything. We just talk about how the heart is deceitful. What if the person is deceiving you yeah, the yeah, whole yeah, time? Yeah. And some, some, God some will send are, you proof. <laughs> They're deceitful. I understand. I would say, you, have fruits. you cannot fake fruits. You I cannot fake evidence. But you still have to go back to God and make sure that God wants you to have a mentor. What if God does not want you to what have you one? No, I'm, no, that like mentor mentorship is not a bad thing. I, I I'm would not never saying say it's not, but like, I think it's the it's the way in which we apply mentoring that that's becoming a concern the main of course but of course the main thing yes is go back to god but that's the whole point of fruits you you wouldn't know what the fruits are without the source it's, you, you wouldn't right you wouldn't be the, able to, the, to the, find to out to figure out who to even go to for help because one thing as 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 believers yes the lord can help you but understand he also helps you through people like yes of course always go back to Big man upstairs, and he will guide you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes he will also guide you to people. To people, yeah. We are vessels that God uses. And, and understand that the way to activate that wisdom and that discernment is to find their fruits, identify their fruits. People are crazy; they cannot fake fruits. I'm a big believer on what the Word says. So if the Bible says you will know them by their fruits, and they tell you what the fruits of the Spirit are, then people cannot fake it. Okay, they can't fake. It. So based on that, a question for you is this. Um, so one way to know that is to stay in God's words, right? So how can young Christian apply uh, the Bible, uh, engage with the Bible now and make it relevant to their everyday life? We ask that again. <laughs> how, how can, can you make young the Christian, Bible? Right? Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about mentoring. We're talking about faith, right? And then trusting. And the only person that can reveal those things to you is the Holy Spirit. So okay. how can a young Christian engaged i use the word engaged on purpose in the bible and scriptures right and how does that apply to their everyday lives i think for us youth i think we have to go back i don't want to say isolation i, I know there's another you can say whatever you want as long as you can but, <laughs> <laughs> but i feel like if i say isolation it's gonna be like you staying away from people but i think times you have to spend set some apart. Uh, set apart right mm -hmm. spend some time alone with god so that way you can know God. I'm still going to go back to knowing God's voice. reason why it's because the devil is speaking and so is God. And the devil is very deceitful. He will say whatever. He will take the word and twist it and say whatever he wants. But at the end of the day, if you know what God wants for you, if you are working in the same path with God and know his will, you should be able to, you know, engage with him. reason why? Because... There's challenges every day. Even God will allow you to be tested, you know, just to test your faith. So in order for you not to fall into temptation, in order for you not to fall, you have to make sure you know the word of God. You have to make sure that, you know, okay, this is the voice of God. I know this is from God. And I know this is not from God and I'm going to rebuke it. That's the only way. I mean, I'm not saying that's the only way. That's what I'm thinking. That's, that's good. Anything you want to add, Caleb? That's good. On applying the word of God to their daily life, I mean... I understand that the Bible is also not just a book of like people or just notes or whatever like that, but it also is a book of how to live. So in a way, you can't as a Christian walk in life without the Bible guiding you in life or that's trying to t tell you what life actually comes with. You can't. It's like it's like trying to. It's like as a you know as a as elementary we all had a math book you know that had all the examples that had what we did all our classwork and homework on. There's no way like as as somebody who's trying to learn math you know you ain't got you ain't got no book you ain't got something that's telling you or you don't got a teacher that's trying to show you what exactly math is. 
and how to identify it and how to how to you know answer it or whatever like that. So that's what if if the Bible is is like a a book of how to live your life, and your question is how do I live my life? Well, that's the, apply, go to the apply Bible. The Bible. <laughs> apply the Bible. You cannot you cannot apply you cannot live a Christian life without applying the Bible. Like you cannot you cannot walk this daily life of of a Christian if you're not applying the Word of God. So it's like like. I don't want to make it sound like, you know, like like some obvious thing. Of course, it's difficult. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. it but is. when it comes to the question of just like, how does somebody apply the word to their daily life? Well, first, you got to read it. I mean, there's no way. There's there's ways, on you know, on YouTube and stuff like that. Actually, you know, sometimes they break these things down. Like one, a great, um, is a great source is a, the Bible project. It's a great, it's like this, it's like this company that animates the Bible and they break it down. You know, and they put it in video so you can actually understand. And they put it down, they break it down to like jit level, like kids. <laughs> you would not, you would not like misinterpret. You would not like not understand what they're saying. Yo, I didn't mean to laugh at you, bro. <laughs> Long, okay, back in the day, we had these books, right? Like it'll tell you uh, what was the name of those books? Like dummies. Um, well, for dummies. Oh yeah, there's stuff like that. What, what, was, for what was the name of it? Man, it's been a while. <laughs> been a been long time coming. Like it, it's like they, they have this book. I, th I believe those books used to be yellow. <laughs> it's like you know, um, let's say how to build a table for dummies. <laughs> so when he said they break, they break, they break it down. <laughs> they do. To me, you put it out layman's terms. They break it down for dummies. <laughs> You, so, might, you might be a dumb. You can't say I didn't get you. <laughs> you can't say you didn't get Actually, for you. For you. Literally. Literally. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but no. That's wild, yeah. bro. But just the fact that, man. There is. Ooh. Chat GPT. What? <laughs> Chat GPT. Yeah. How? Child, there's a lot of, there's a lot of verses I could. I can say, but I don't know what it is. I gotta go and chat GPT. He'll <laughs> give, give it to you. There's sources out there that will help. If anything, sometimes yes, it may be harder to walk. You know, the Christian life nowadays because you know there's a lot of influences and there's a lot of things going on. But sometimes, if you, and on on the other hand, it's actually easier than how it was back then. Mm -hmm. Like it's easy to get the there's access more, to the word. There's more resources. There's more resources. There's a lot of there's a lot of projects and there's a lot of you know. Um, you know, organizations and stuff like that that are built to actually help. Since we're so, gonna be online, we might as well be online for the right things. Yeah, like for example, this this podcast. You know, that's another source for people to actually like, yo, tap in, tap in, literally, literally tap, tap in into how to live your life. Like this, this topic is really. We are not experts. Yeah, we ain't ex experts. experts. All we can do, whatsoever. if we don't know the answer. Of course, we're going to direct you to somebody or try our best to find somebody that will help. That's why sometimes we have But we'll we get you an answer for sure. Oh, for sure. Unless it's one that cannot be answered by us. It has to be answered by yeah, God. You're just going to have to wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wait. <laughs> but we try our best out here, man. Try our best. There's a lot of there's a sources out there, man. You yeah. know, use it. It's extremely important for us to know how to read the Bible, right? And how to rely on God. In Proverbs 3, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. I think that answers your question, ma'am. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Amen. If China was not what he direct you to do, don't go to China, right? Because if you are reading the Bible, then God just literally said like, not to trust on your own understanding, but acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So if I'm a Christian, and that's what the Bible is telling me, then I'm, uh, I'm going to rely on that source, right? Because the word of God is true and amen. That means that there's nothing above it, right? Yep. So therefore, I'm going to rely on God and whatever decision I make, I will pray that, you know, is, is the decision that he, you know, uh, paved the path for me to make. I also have a community, you know, Ooh, as a youth. So important. Yeah. As a youth. Boy, is scary to walk this life alone, whether you're a Christian or not. Bruh, depressing. Ooh, walking out yeah. here alone in the, these streets. Depressing. Y'all boys the birds. Are dangerous. That's okay. for the birds. Is. Isolation is for the birds. Okay? <laughs> like this, this me, myself, and I nah, for the bro. birds. I'm not walking of alone, course, man. Of course, have your personal, you know, relationship yeah, you with your, the you Lord. You need your, your moments. You need your moments. But, bruh. 
like walking this this life alone is very scary. Yeah, very it's for the <laughs> yeah. You can fly right out with that <laughs> with that idea, bro. You know, Y'all, you, you do need a pack. You know, Jesus, you, Jesus sent out the disciples in two. My my, you look, look, never went by themselves. Uh-oh. All right, like no, go into the world. No, I need, you need help. <laughs> we we going together, you bro. Need, you do need it. Like a sense of community is extremely important. I'm I'm glad you touched on that, bro. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, so now, so how do we as as youth put our faith in action? How, how do we do that? Like, what does that look like? Well, one thing, one step to that, I guess, is to not be afraid, mm. or if you're afraid, still try to do it. Like, it's it's scary to really like. Don't get me wrong. There's of course you may have like a group of friends that does things that may seem cool, mm -hmm. and it's hard to be set apart it's hard because you're gonna think that you might be alone that you're gonna be alone you're you're scared of what the outcome would be but understand that the what the bible says like the lord is a man of his word like he's not he would not forsake you like you you're gonna be okay if there's gonna be a time where you feel alone pray ask god you know lord i feel alone right it's okay to talk to god like i feel alone lord like help me feel help me feel that i'm not and in times the Lord would actually, he is capable of answering that. You know, he's capable of showing you and, and identifying to you, like, you are not alone. Like, it's okay. Like, this may look scary. Like, he understands. Like, the Bible says, you know, he who knew no sin became sin. Like, he knows how it feels to be alone. He knows how it feels to be tempted. He knows how it feels when people don't want to listen to you or when people look at you different. It's okay. Like, you're not just serving some God who don't understand. He understands. It's all right, bro. So just be, I say, try not to be so afraid. Because when you when you lock into that fear so much, it will keep you stagnant and you won't move. So it's okay to go out on a limb. You know, just actually like do it, bro. Like 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 Nike. Like my dog with the Nike tech on right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> do it. We are not promoting Nike just, on here, bro. They're not paying us, bro. You just stop do it, doing okay? that, bro. I'm just wearing a shirt, a red jack hoodie. That's <laughs> right. it, bro. That's just, it. Yeah, man. Just do it, man. It's scary. I understand, but yeah. it just is do scary. it, man. And also, you have Try. to you have to trust God. And you know, I think the Bible said, "Faith without work is dead." So you have to put on the work. And I was having a conversation with my best friend. Shout out to Jenny. And she was saying like, God is always in the move. And you, if you just stay still, it's not Him not here. It's not Him not listening. It's not Him. You know how we always said, oh, God is not in the season. He's so quiet. It's just you not moving. Sometimes you just have to keep moving and trust in him that no matter what happened, that he's still in control. Oh, Jeff. So two, two, two verse I'm going to leave you with. Psalm 119, verse 9. Uh, how can a young person stay in the path of purity? By living according to God's word stay in your word right how can you put your faith in action by knowing the word of god so when the devil come and attack you with the same word then you could apply the truth of that word to rebuke him stay in god's word and the last verse i'm gonna leave you with is matthew 5 verse 14 through 16 you are the light of the world a town built on a hill cannot be hidden Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. Stand out. Stand out. And how do you do that? By putting yourself apart. It's okay for you to be the one to lead the pack. It's okay if you don't follow what everybody else is doing. The meaning, trending. You don't have to follow the trend. You know what, man? It's hard out here for Christians enough. We are under scrutiny. Our churches are under attack. Our spiritual leaders are bending backwards for money, reputation, and everything else. So us as Christians, those of you who are, you know, uh, 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 faithfully on your knees, right, praying and reading the word of God, stand. Because if you don't stand for God, you will fall for everything else. So apply your faith. Remember, you are the light of the world. So shine bright, young men, young women. Shine bright. 
and let them see you um, because God has a plan and his plan is for you to prosper, right? His plan for you to, to have love, to feel a love, compassion, to, to have a life of prosperity without having to pay a million dollar for it because he's faithful to make those things come true in your life. Amen. So with that being said, man, this was a take of tap to tap to tap. Tap. Hey. We holla at y'all next time. We out.